Episode 1, Replacing Your Calculator with Excel. In this video, I'll show you how you can use Excel to perform all the calculations that you're used to doing on a regular calculator. I'll also demonstrate why Excel is better than a calculator in many ways. Because this is the first video in the series, I won't assume any prior knowledge of Excel. However, I hope that there will be some useful information for everyone, regardless of your familiarity with Excel. To open it, I usually pin the icon on my toolbar in Windows, or I can search Excel in my Windows toolbar. The Excel user interface is a spreadsheet, which is an array of cells. Each cell has a name. The column is named with letters, and the rows are numbered, similar to a game of Battleship. A cell can hold several types of data. Three of the most common is a string, also known as text, a value, or a formula. To type a string or value, simply type your letters or numbers into the cell. To type a formula, begin with an equal sign and use intuitive syntax such as plus, minus, star, slash, or caret for simple calculations. Excel follows the PMDAS order of operations and you can use parentheses to specify an order of operations. For some mathematical operations, you can use a built-in function from the Excel library. For example, you can add all of the values in a cell by typing sum and then put all the values in parentheses. I'd recommend looking through the list of functions in the math and trig and the statistics sections of the formula bar and committing to memory some of the most useful looking functions. For example, I use average and the square root functions frequently in my own work. So, what is an example of a calculation that you should perform in Excel as a chemical engineer? One of my favorite examples for my material and energy balances class is the ideal gas law. Given any two of the three variables of pressure, temperature, and molar volume, you could theoretically calculate the third. For example, suppose I wanted to calculate the molar volume of an ideal gas at 350K and 20,000 pascals. The formula would be V under bar is equal to RT divided by P. After looking up the value of the gas constant as 8.314 pascals times meters cubed per mole per kelvin, I could simply type that equation into the formula bar and hit enter to see my final answer, which would then be stored in that cell. This is pretty neat, but if this is all Excel could do, then it wouldn't be that much better than a calculator. The magic of Excel begins with the ability to reference cells in a formula. That is, instead of typing numerical values into the formula bar, you can type the numerical value into another cell, and when it becomes time to use that value in your equation, you can simply type, or easier still, just click, the coordinates of the cell. This means that if you wanted to try a calculation again with a different numerical value, you wouldn't have to retype the entire equation or edit the entry like you would have to with a calculator. In the reference cell, you can edit the value and the formula will update automatically. Super neat for trial and error type problems. But wait, there's more. Suppose that you wanted to evaluate the dependence of one variable on another. For example, seeing how the molar volume of an ideal gas changes as the pressure changes. Excel allows you to drag a formula to other cells such that you can see all values at once. The cell references will change too, which is convenient, but also something to be aware of. One quick tip that can increase your speed. If you highlight a cell and merely double click the lower right hand corner, it will copy the formula down to the bottom of your data table. This is especially handy if you have lots and lots of rows and don't want to drag your formula down for an extended period of time. Looking at my spreadsheet now, it seems a little cluttered to keep all this information. After all, the temperature and the gas constant are not changing for this particular example. Instead, what if I just wanted to list certain variables once and keep the cell references constant? Excel has a way to do that. In the formula bar, type a dollar sign in front of both the column letter and the row number. This is called an absolute reference, and it will make sure you're always referencing the same cell regardless of where you drag your formula. You could also keep only the row or the column absolutely referenced, but for many applications, I find it's easier just to absolutely reference the entire cell. The keyboard shortcut for this is the F4 key, and it will toggle through all the variations of absolute referencing. This property makes it possible to see how a variable changes relative to multiple variables with a single formula. To continue our ideal gas law example, suppose I wanted to calculate molar volume of an ideal gas for a range of pressures and temperatures. Here I can set up a little two-dimensional table. Using the absolute referencing tricks that I just showed you, 
such that you could use a single equation and drag that equation to all cells in the table. Let's see how long that takes you on your TI-83. That will conclude this episode. I hope you enjoyed watching.